All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell. This is an Inspiron 27, 7710, all in one. All right, so the way you do this, um, it's actually um, relatively simple, but a little bit scary feeling. Okay, so basically we just need to pull this bottom cover off. So the way you do that, okay, if you look at up here, let me see if I can show this. So the camera spot here, okay, you get in there, you can see how we can already pull part of it out. Okay, now the scary part is you gotta pull pretty hard. Um, the clips kind of go in to the sides there. So basically you wanna hold the screen out, make, make sure you're not like push, putting pressure on the screen itself, and make sure you're not pushing on the webcam area, and then you just gotta pull, okay? So what I do, um, what I find makes it easier, is I lay it down like this on the floor, soft surface, carpet, whatever, okay? Get on here, and then, you gotta hold the screen down to the ground and just pull really hard, okay? You might have to work your way over to the other sides here a little, but basically we're just lifting, okay? So it helps to kind of work your finger in the first gap over to the side, and then hopefully now it will pull easier. Nope, we gotta go over to this side as well, I guess. Okay, there we go. Okay, now that we got those corners, you can see, okay. So I guess the trick is, let me actually rotate it around to show you a little bit better. I'm gonna click it all back together. Okay. Okay, so click everything, make sure everything's back in. Let me rotate it around and see if I can show this better. Okay, so we're gonna rotate this that way. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this better, but I guess you can. All right, let me move that. Okay, so you pull this up. Oops, the camera doesn't need to come up, but you pull this up. It creates a gap here. You work your fingers down and keep holding this middle portion up. Okay, and then work your way down the side and you can see now this whole portion came out. So keep holding that up and then work your way down. Ah, and there we go. And then once you got all the sides out, you can see it easily pops out and you can see how it works. You have these clips here. So these clips go towards the outside. So as the case kind of flexes inwards like this, it pulls those clips away. And here you can see those clips. Okay. Anyways, let's set that aside. So the reason we're opening this is the computer's having some weird boot issue. The customer told me it told <laughs> told me it just goes to a black screen. <coughs> Sorry. That was like a workout. <laughs> okay, anyways, the customer told me it goes to like, uh, like lights come on, but it doesn't really do anything. So what we're going to check is if the BIOS battery is having some problems. Um, they told me that after they, or when they got it to boot up, uh, it would come on, but it would show the date and time is incorrect. Okay, we're using a pH... 2 or JS2 screwdriver. I don't know if they have a JS2 screwdriver, but I'm using a PH2 screwdriver. And we might have to remove this. I want to get to the motherboard here. I do see a screw up here, screw over here. So I see two. I don't know if I have to, I probably have to remove this as well. Um, they actually show something here. So there are four screws, it looks like according to that. So I'm assuming we need to take this portion off. So we have to use a PH2 screwdriver and let's get these out. Okay, so we got one here. Keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my work area, desk, whatever you're working on. Okay, three. I don't know how many screws there are. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Um, other than that, I do have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. If you could subscribe to that one as well, that would also help a lot. Okay, it looks like this piece kind of gets caught there. So I'm not sure if this is, it looks like it separates from the bottom portion. Okay, so 
So this looks like we can kind of wiggle it and pull it up. Okay. And separate it this way. There's some clips there. Yeah, so you need to separate this. Don't pull up the part that has the actual power button under there. We're kind of just pulling this upper layer. You gotta wiggle it to undo the clips. And then there we go. All right, so now that we got that, we should be able to pull this out. You might have to lift the hinge up there, okay? Like this, and there we go. So here we have the bottom portion of that out of the way. Okay, so here now I can see the screws that we need to remove. It's gonna be hard to position the tripod because the leg is right there. All right, so again, keep the screws in order. We got four screws holding this little metal box down. All right, the portion up here looks like just for the camera, it looks like there's only two screws holding that in, but we're not gonna remove that because I don't know anyone that's gonna need to replace that um, or where you would even get a replacement part. If you wanna remove the two and a half inch SATA hard drive, there's one screw here. So we'll remove that. Okay, and then you should be able to just slide that out. Yep, so there you go, two and a half inch SATA hard drive. There's four screws holding that in place. You'll have to switch to a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver to take those out. Then you can take this hard drive out. You can put an SSD if you want. If you're gonna do that, assuming the uh, operating system is on here, you are going to have to put, um, either clone the, uh, the hard drive to the new drive um, or you need to be ready to reinstall Windows. Okay, there's two more screws up here, which uh, I guess I gotta lift it up. All right, so we got this screw here. And we got this screw over here. Sorry, it's not easy to film this one. I need like a little crane or something to hold my, my camera over <laughs> this. But once we got those four screws, we should be able to pull this off. You want to carefully wiggle this because there are all these ports. Most likely they're getting caught there. Okay, so carefully pull this forward. As you can see, I'm kind of pushing on the Ethernet port a little bit. But here you can hear it's sliding out. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so we got this box off, and you can actually see here they show like instructions first. It says take this off. Second, lift this up. Well, first take out the four screws it's saying. All right, you got the camera thing, connector right here. You got this little connector going into the screen somewhere in this. This says for touch. This says for webcam. So they actually label it, and this says for BL, which is probably the backlight for the screen. Um, then you got this most likely is for the screen itself, the LVDS cable. Um, if you're gonna mess with this, you probably wanna hold the power button for at least 15 seconds, and then you can flip this latch out, but make sure your computer's off before doing that. Actually, there's multiple cables here. This says LVDS, so what is this? Type C? So this one connector is just for the USB-C ports, I guess. Um, you got a wireless card here, two sticks of RAM. All right, the RAM comes out by, I'm scared it's gonna fall forward pulling these two metal tabs to the side, then it pops up like this. And here is the RAM. The RAM is a PC4 3200AA stick of RAM. So you can put any PC4 3200AA RAM if you want. You can put two 16 gig sticks and upgrade to 32 gigs. It looks like there's a small M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD right here. So you can put a full sized one. You will have to move this little mounting bracket over as well. Let me see if I can show you that. We're gonna switch over to a PH1 JS1 screwdriver. Okay, I know, sorry, the viewing angle is kind of not good, but I can't really get a good angle of this. All right, so we got that screw out, then this pulls up slightly. Be very careful, pull slowly. There's a thermal pad sticking it down. There you go, okay, then you can take that out. And then here underneath, you can see if you were to switch over to a PH2, um, then you can take this screw out and you can move it down here to upgrade instead of a 2230 M.2 you can switch to a 2280 M.2 I'm gonna put it back where it was because we're not upgrading the SSD or anything we're just trying to figure out why the computers having the weird boot issue that it's having okay so get this back in pretty simple stick that back down 
All right, and we'll get the screw back in. You gotta keep switching screwdrivers because of the way they designed this. Okay. There you go. As you can see, the heatsink design, the CPU and GPU are both soldered here, so you can't replace it. There's a little connector here that says SD card. Actually, let me move, hold the camera so I can show you better what all this is. All right, there's the CMOS battery here. We're gonna pop that out to test it. So there's this little metal clip. You just pull this spring-loaded clip back and then the battery can fall out, okay? So there's the battery. We gotta check if it's at least three volts. If it is, then the battery should be fine. Okay, so here it's nice. They la label everything. You can see internal speaker here, so that connector. And then the cable goes down there and I'm pretty sure a wire goes along to go to here, yep to the other speaker. All right, you got the power buttons and stuff here. Okay, power button and reset button. And I don't see where the wire's going to there, but yeah, okay. What else? It says USB-C. I don't know what USB-C they're referring to there. Or Type-C, I don't know. All right, jump one. What is this? SD card, and then this is... DMIC. What's DMIC? The mic? I don't know. Something mic. Probably. The fan connector's there. I'm gonna have to clean the dust off because it's kind of dusty. But uh, yeah, interesting. You see this? They made the fan vent here and then it goes up through this little hole there that they put into this plastic. Interesting. They didn't want to, I guess, put a copper pipe that went all the way up here because it would cost a lot more. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and check the battery. All right, so I got a voltmeter here. We're just going to test this, okay? Put one on the positive and one on the negative, and... Wow, you see that? We only got one volt. Okay, so... Oh, wait, no, 3.15. Why was it showing one earlier? Okay, I don't know what was going on earlier. Maybe because I was touching it or it was going through my hand. I don't know. Was it going through my hand? I have no clue. I don't know how it was only showing one earlier. But uh, there we go. 3.153. So this battery is perfectly fine. Um, and if that's the case, I'm not sure what to tell the customer because definitely... Everything else seems okay. I guess I can double check all the connections here. They all look okay. They all look okay. Yeah, there's not really much I can do inside this computer, but I guess now we reset the BIOS. Um, the board itself seems relatively easy to replace if it needs to be replaced. Uh, there's one screw here, here, here another here and here so five screws and then you have all these little cables and connectors that need to be disconnected if the customer decides for me to replace their motherboard then I guess you'll get to see how I redo the thermal paste and all of that on this model um, but other than that I think that's pretty much it there's not really much else to see inside here I'm going to plug it back in and see what's going on. Uh, I'll dust it out real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. As you can see, the fan is all clean now. Let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. So to reassemble, basically just slot everything back in. So line it back up, carefully lower it down. These little foam pads are what make it difficult to go back in. Or I don't know if it's foam, but whatever those thingies are, okay. Then we're going to go ahead and get the uh, hard drive back in. So this goes like this and it slides in that way. Okay. I'm not quite sure what is causing the power issue that he's having because it just goes black screen and doesn't do anything. He said he's even left it for like half an hour and then um, it would randomly show that the date and time is messed up and whatever. Um, but yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get all these screws back in. And then I'll power it up and see if there's anything going on here that I can take a look at. But probably not going to be much I can do. All right. That screw in. And the last 
screw in over here. All right, at least this one isn't too difficult to take apart. All right, there we go. Now we gotta get the little bottom plastic piece back in. So you do, again, need to lift the um, legs up here like this. And then slide this in. Put that back under there. Can be a little tricky. Oh yeah, this is a little tricky. Come on, get that back in. The hard part, or the tricky part is the, oops, sorry, the little posts here. So you actually have to keep it up this way and then you can get it in, okay? Once you know the trick, then it's not too bad. All right, so there we go. Now we gotta click everything back down. Make sure all those clips go back in, okay? The sides have most of the clips there and then everything else looks good. All right, let's go ahead and get all the screws back in and then we'll get the back cover back on. And that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Um, I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. If you can subscribe to that one, that will help a lot as well. That one, I'm trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get to that soon. All right, let's go ahead and get the last screw in here. And then we'll get the back cover on. So back cover, you already saw me put it on the first time because I took it out and then put it back to show you a second time. Um, but anyways, I would start with the bottom here, okay? Make sure that's all lined up, and then just work our way up, clicking these all back in. Okay, push on the back middle as well. You can lift it if you want, and go ahead and click these in. All right, and that's pretty much it. All right, make sure everything's clicked in, and we're good to go. All right, all right, be careful not to push on the panel screen panel itself you don't want to damage that but make sure to push all around click everything in and that's it all right again thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye all right so it looks like pulling the cmos bios battery out might have fixed it i've shut it down and restarted it multiple times and now it's all good hopefully this video helped you guys out again thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye okay one other thing that might make you think you're Computer's not working. I don't know if you can see, but there, oh yeah, there's two buttons under here. So the small button here is to change the display output. So this actually can be used as a normal monitor. So if you press that little button, what it does is it switches between the computer and the HDMI input. So here you can see if you push HDMI in, the screen just stays black, all right? Nothing's gonna be on there. And then if you push it again, that tiny button, and it should now you see it changed to pc okay so i'm wondering if maybe it can be that it's the issue that happened but i don't know because um the customer didn't show me beforehand what they were doing but you can see hdmi in again screen's just black again you can hear the sounds but nothing else so push that again and there we go all right and there we go we're just gonna shut this down um, I haven't really had any other issues with this, so I don't know, but I don't know how they got it to reset the BIOS from just turning it on and off, but there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one again. Sorry, I said bye so many times. All right.